Learningmeasure.tv Science and Engineering Podcast with Emphasis on Measurement Brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com Episode 19 Hello, I'm David Archer. I'm the owner of LearningMeasure.com and LearningDasher.tv. This podcast is sponsored by TradePub.com, GoToMeeting.com, and is part of the Blueberry community of podcasts. Uh, LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based training website that is associated with this podcast. Uh, when registering with LearningMeasure.com, you've got two free weeks of courses, and then uh, after for a subscription of five dollars a month, uh, you get you can maintain access and take advantage of all the uh, the material on our site. I'd like to announce addition of two new courses uh, into the course catalog: uh, Measurement 109, Fundamental Constants in Metrology. It's a brief overview of some fundamental uh, physical constants that you can use to establish traceability which is the subject of this podcast. Um, And Math 200, Introduction to Differential Equations. Some of you have actually requested that I put together some sort of course on differential equations, and this is the first in a series. It might take a while to develop them, but we're going to be be developing them. Uh, Also, the Measurement Science Conference uh, this year will be held in uh, Disneyland Hotel, March 10th through March 14th. Uh, at the moment, I'm planning on attending, so if any of you are, are going to be there, I would like to meet with you, um, and uh, we'll figure that out. Just email me uh, on the, one of the emails you'll hear later. Okay, um, today we're going to talk a little bit about traceability. The uh, International Vocabulary of Basic and General Terms in Metrology, also known as the VIM, Uh, in 1993 published a definition of traceability. Traceability is, given in that standard, is uh, property of the result of a measurement or value of a standard whereby it can be related to stated references, usually national or international standard through an unbroken chain of intercomparisons, all having stated uncertainties. The definition has two notes. The concept is often expressed by the adjective traceable. The unbroken chain of comparisons is called the traceability chain. Well, uh, traceability is a complex issue. It's somewhat ambiguous. Um, Okay, the uh, definition is under revision currently. Uh, from what I understand, there's a new ISO standard that is in the works. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the concept of traceability. Um, for instance, the kilogram is traceable to a um, particular standard at the BIPM in France. There is a particular artifact that defines the meter, I'm sorry, the meter, the kilogram. (laughs) So, and this then was, a bunch of duplicate standards were made, and they were sort of compared against that standard and passed out to a bunch of countries. So, we have national standards. From that, and by the way, the VIM defines a national standard as standard recognized by a a national decision to serve in a country as the basis for assigning assigning values to other standards of the quantity concerned. Now, this might be used to come to then various like companies and institutions might have their own standards calibrated. 
and so on. This is a, tra this is a traceability chain. And each step, there's going to be some asso uncertainty associated with this, and there's going to be some uncertainty associated with this. And then the st there might be, you know, s secondary cal labs or laboratories and so on. It could just, the, the, the chain could be as long as need be. And that's pretty much how um, uh, the idea of the, now once you have national standards, um, you can have secondary standards and primary standards um, and reference standards and working standards, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, before I get too much farther, I need to do my little commercial thing here. Um, do you spend more traveling to meetings than you actually do meeting people? If your time is valuable, and whose isn't, then you need GoToMeeting. With GoToMeeting, you can instantly meet with anyone. All you need is a PC and an internet connection. During the meeting, your attendees will see their computers, see on their computers what you, what you show on your PC. It's like you're in the same room. Plus, it's totally interactive. You can all work together, make changes to a report, add slides to a presentation, even show someone how to fix their computer. Think of the time you'll save. No more driving or flying to meetings. Plus, you can hold as many meetings as you want for one low flat rate. Flat rate. It's a real money saver. The next time you're waiting in line at the airport, you'll wish you could meet online instead. So sign up right now to go to meeting free for 45 days. For this special offer, visit gotomeeting.com forward slash podcast. That's gotomeeting.com forward slash podcast. Try it free now. Okay. Now, there are other ways to get traceability other than just direct, direct intercomparison, a chain of intercomparison to standards at like the BIPM. But we're going to talk about other types of standards. We'll talk about primary standards. You can have a primary standard, and it may or may not be traceable back to an international standard or a national standard. For instance, it could be something like uh, Joseph's Injunction vo um, Voltage Stantum's a Quantum Hall Effect Resistor. It could be some other thing that's traceable through like natural physical constants or other uh, or direct realization of, of the SI units. And below, the, and a primary standard is defined in the VIM as uh, standard that is designated or widely acknowledged as having the highest uh, metrological qualities and whose value is accepted without reference to other standards of the same quality. It has a note. The concept of primary standard is equally valid for based quantities and derived quantities. From that, you can calibrate secondary standards. Now, a secondary standard is defined by the VIM as a standard whose value is assigned by comparison with a primary standard of the same quality. So you might be comparing a solid state voltage reference somehow to a Josephson Junction voltage standard, for example, or somehow you've got a primary standard uh, you know, definition of the meter. Uh, and you're comparing it against that. Or possibly a triple point cell compared to some sort of reference thermometer. And then there's lower level standards um, that this might be used to get calibrate reference standards. A whole bunch of them, maybe. Reference standards. OK. So this might be, these might actually be done inside a national lab. This might be done in regional com you know, companies or something. Uh, so reference standard is defined as a standard usually having the highest metrological quality available at a given location or in a given organization from which measurements made there are derived. OK, so you have these reference standards out at at other locations, and then there's usually another level below this, or maybe there, this might also be used to calibrate other reference standards. 
For instance, this might be a primary lab at a company if it's big enough, and these could be secondary calibration labs. And you could have tertiary labs as well if, it, you know, so you might have a lab and then like regional labs and then local labs, or this could be a country's primary, and these are co um, companies, and then they use these to calibrate other standards. And below this is something called a working standard. Okay, working standards are defined as, in the VIM, as a standard that is routinely, is used routinely to calibrate or check material measures, measure, measuring instruments or reference materials. A working, a note has notes. A working standard is usually calibrated against a reference standard. A working standard that, that is used routinely to ensure that measurements are being carried out correctly is called a check standard. So a check standard is something just to make sure that your process is working correctly. Now it could be that a working standard, if it's, if it, if it's the accuracy requirements are such that it needs something, it might be calibrated against a secondary standard or a primary standard, but you do, generally wouldn't do that unless you absolutely had to. Okay, and then there's uh, standards that are used to implement the inner comparisons. And those are defined as transfer standards, a standard used as an intermediary to compare standards. Um, you know, there might be some, something used, there, the instrumentation used to compare the different levels of a, this hierarchy of calibration. And this goes right down to the measurement of whatever it is you're, you're trying to measure. So, um, for instance, your bathroom scale. You start out with the BIPM national standards, uh, go down to standards calibrated at a company. Finally, some sort of process at the end is used to check the calibration of the bathroom scale you buy at the store. So that would be a traceable measurement if you had the documentation to prove that at each step of the way there was an unbroken chain of inner comparisons. Um, Okay, we're going to try to make a little bit more money right after, and then we'll be back right after this. One of LearningMeasure.tv's sponsors is TradePub.com. TradePub.com is a site where one, one can sign up for a large number of free trade publications. If you'd like to support this podcast, uh, go to the LearningMeasure.tv site scroll down to the free publications link and choose one of the magazines or one of the one of the publications or one of the categories and sign up through that link. Each pu publication subscribed to through this link on learningmeasure.tv website helps keep Learning Measure TV on the air. Thank you for your support. Okay, that's all I wanted to discuss in this episode. Hopefully to keep this one short so it doesn't take us long to render. Now, um, I'm in the process of changing my day job. I'm not making enough money off this yet to do this full time. So um, the next couple of months might be a little bit erratic, but I plan on uh, somewhere in January hitting, being, trying to uh, be more regular with, with the podcast. We're bringing in some people who are, um, are interested in contributing to the podcast. Hopefully that'll be online in January and will be a little bit more, be more regular. Same is true for the, those same people will be helping out with course development, I hope, in, uh, in the, on the training side of this. So anyway, I hope to see you all at the MSC. Um, and hopefully that my plans don't change. Um, and, as I'll, and we are definitely need some more um, suggestions on where to go from here. Again, if you have any suggestions on, on what we should do in, in this podcast, send an email to suggestions at learningmeasure.tv. In fact, if you're watching this podcast right now, send me a suggestion. Let me know what you want to, um, let me know what you want to see on here. Same thing if you have any questions, like if you have a homework question or a measurement question or a question involving something in particular, 
Send your questions to questions at learningmeasure.tv and we'll try to answer them on the air. Be on any topic, generally, I, if, I'll decide whether I want to answer it, <laughs> okay? Uh, also, if you're a vendor who, or an individual wants to be part of our consultant network or you want to advertise your service or, or products or yourself on this uh, podcast, uh, send us an email at vendors at learningmeasure.tv. So um, that's it for this week. Um, hopefully we'll get at least one out in December and uh, may, hopefully in January we'll hit this uh, uh, more regularly. Okay, see you next time.